everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. My name is Jack. Today we are doing a collection review of all 20 of the Lego Ninjago movie collectible minifigs. The collectible minifigure series includes 20 figs in total, and what makes them collectible is of course uh, the prints on their bodies, or at least most of the bodies are exclusive, and if not that, then they come with some sort of exclusive item. There's a lot of fun creative designs here, and I'm gonna go through this collection just in the order that we get from the little piece of paper on the inside. Each one of these minifigs does actually have a number to them. So let's start off with the first one. This is Kendo Kai. Now years ago, there were Kendo versions of most of the ninjas, and this is sort of of the updated version of that. The detailing on Kai's body is pretty much the same as we got from other versions of Kai from the Lego Ninjago movie. So the exclusive parts are the uh, armor and helmet piece for the Kendo fighting. The gold and red print on the helmet really does match up with the color combinations that we get from Kai, and he comes with some really cool expressions exclusive to just this Kai. He seems to be training with some sticks, and he also comes with his alternate hairpiece. The next minifig is Spinjitsu Training Nia. We don't usually see Nia in in white and gold, but I for one welcome the change up. And like so many of the ninja robe detailings, I think my favorite part is always just how they get the uh, fold in the clothes to match up on the front of the torso with the print on the legs. She comes with two wooden katanas, some very nice expressions, and all in all, she seems like a pretty fun fig. The next up here is Lloyd. He is once again in his green ninja suit. Nothing much has changed from other versions of Lloyd that we got from other sets, but he does come with this blueprint printed tile piece and some different expressions for his face. There's also an alternate hairpiece for him. And let's go through a lot of these main characters. Number four is Master Wu. I think most people are referring to him as Cornflakes Wu because of the accessory that he comes along with. And though the movie isn't out yet, I feel like Master Chicken is going to be part of it and it would have been nice if we got him as a side accessory instead. The print is pretty cool and I do like Wu's alternate expression because he does look pretty darn happy. Number five is Garmadon. Here the detailing on his body is pretty much exact to a lot of the other Garmadon that we got from this original Ninjago movie line, though the expression on his face is different. That's what makes him exclusive. And also the mold for his hat is now in black and his weapon, I believe, is also exclusive uh, to the collectible fig here. It's an interesting mold, but for the most part, a lot of these original characters don't have a ton of exclusive prints, just maybe a couple of uh, changed expressions or special accessories. And then we get to number six, and this is the first really totally different guy. This is Jay Walker, or basically I just call him casual J because it's uh, the clothes he wears when I guess he's in high school. You can see he's dressed a bit preppy. He's got slacks on that look like they've been ironed and a pretty stylish looking jacket. He comes with a new scarf piece, which is really nice. We This uh, also appears in the Lego Ninjago City set. I'm really liking the ruffled hair piece. That is totally new to just J. He's got some nice expressions that are just for this fig and he comes with, well, a selfie stick. We all knew this day was going to come in Lego and here it is. There's a print of, well, J taking a picture of himself and I got to say this minifig really wins for me just based on total unique points. There's a lot of new parts here, a lot of new prints, and he's a very, very complete fig. Now next up here is Lloyd again, but now this is Lloyd no longer in his suit. And what makes him especially different because we do get him in his uh, hoodie sweatshirt from another set, but what makes him different is the actual hood mold that goes around his head. It shows a little bit of his blonde hair peeking out the front and the bowl in his hand has a special print. It's a really sort of a classic uh, East Asian or maybe Chinese style of uh, white porcelain with the blue outline for some uh, what I believe is a dragon. And all in all, the quality of this print is pretty nice. I do like how that green jacket just prints down a little bit to fold over the belt on the front. And this Lloyd is actually looking pretty good, but not nearly as good as number eight. We've got Cole, who is very obviously going through a rebellious phase. His dark blue tank top has some symbols on the front, but that lightning dash definitely makes you see that it is sort of a take on an ACDC sign. And the boombox piece has been reprinted to have a nice gold outline around the speakers and sort of the little tape deck in the center. The hairpiece is also new for Cole, as well as the expressions. This guy is, uh, he's looking a lot cooler. He's a lot more interesting, I think, of a character just because he's so rebellious and kind of looks like a mean sort of punk, but I certainly welcome it. Number nine here is Lloyd's mom. This is Misako. She seems to be wearing her business attire with probably my favorite detail being the gold embroidery at the bottom of the uh, sand green blouse. She like Jay Walker has some lines that go down the front of the leg pieces, which I think is to kind of indicate that the pants have been pressed or they're uh, maybe ironed out straight. So you can also notice that the lips are different colors on the both top and bottom. Very subtle detailing. And now let's move on to number 10. This is Zane. His eyes are a bit crazy. Like Lloyd is green, his are very, very blue. And that along with his big smile makes him 
look quite a bit different from a lot of the other characters. The rest of the head has that great print that shows his uh, head's been kind of shaved into that sort of flat top military style cut. And the print for both his pants and torso is just awesome. It's excellent. He's got a backpacking backpack on his back. <laughs> And it looks like that's a knit sweater that's kind of going down the front, but the design on it definitely reminds me of Space Invaders. Number 11 is uh, an extremely unique character. This is the Shark Army General. And as general in the name, you'd think this would be a very fierce looking uh, bad guy, but you can see that she doesn't really look particularly intimidating, especially not with that drink in her hands. Pretty much everything you see for this character is new. The prints, the molds, and this sort of aqua themed kind of cape and collar. That's a really cool sort of uh, plastic piece and everything about this character I kind of like. The hair piece is extremely unique where it's kind of uh, washed away on one side and extremely short on the other and the detailing on the legs that show the scaled armor really does look good. She's a cool fig and certainly a bit more unique than some of the exclusive uh, shark army guys. This is the next one. This is the shark army octopus character. I believe the tactical suit on the underside is uh, a little bit different than maybe what we got from some of the other shark army minions from uh, the other sets or the shark army bad guys I should say. He comes with a stud gun and a fish and probably the most annoying headpiece in the world. It's nice and gummy and it looks cool, but it is just impossible to take off without uh, also taking the head off at the same time. 13 is the Shark Army Angler guy. Once again, new types of prints that make up the tactical suit on both the legs and the torso. The angler mold for the head has changed colors. I think we got this guy in another set, but that was in blue. And he also comes with this spiked mace piece, which is interesting. This is a rubber piece that was uh, kind of throwing us off when we were feeling the bags out because I was feeling feeling for some spikes, but they kind of get pushed down because they're so soft. And uh, yeah, if you're feeling for spikes um, in these bags and you can't find the angler, they're really soft and it's kind of hard to find. Personally, I like the angler a little bit more than the octopus, but not as much as the shark army great white. Not entirely sure why they call him great white because the shark is totally black, but he has an extremely interesting set of prints that go along both the mold for the shark and all over the body. He's holding a black fish that's shooting flame out of its mouth. And it looks like he has singed himself basically all over and he's still either burning or smoldering. The print on his face is also <laughs> pretty, pretty good. And he looks like the more appropriate and intimidating bad guy commander, a little bit more than maybe the shark army general. Now we showed basically a classic Garmadon off earlier, but uh, these are some of the new Garmadons. Number 15 is flashback Garmadon. I think we already saw a picture of what this guy looks like in the trailer. Best part for sure for me is how the tie print matches from the top of the torso all the way down to the bottom of the next torso piece. The print for the face is also pretty awesome with those aviator sunglasses and the nice big grin. He's got a sort of comb over blonde hairstyle and a special print in his hand that looks like maybe a future home that he and Misako want to get, but it's a, a volcano surrounded by a white picket fence. This character is just awesome. I think he looks good with the sort of nougaty uh, shirt piece that's used. All of his arms are dual molded, so they're kind of like short sleeve collared shirts. And once again, he's got some streaks that go down the front of the legs that look like his pants have been ironed. That's sort of a common theme that we're seeing throughout all these figs. The third Garmadon, number 16 in line, is also a pretty awesome guy. This is Volcano Garmadon. Looks like he's really just wearing his uh, nighttime pajamas. They've got volcanoes all over him, little clouds and stuff like that. Something that maybe uh, a little kid would wear. And maybe he's having a midnight snack or something because he comes with a spoon and another bowl. This is also a new mold and print for this bowl, different design with the waves. And the print on his head is also unique just to this guy, though it does look like kind of the same smirk that we got from Flashback Garmadon, just without the aviators put on top. Now, rounding off to the last couple of figs, number 17 is Gong and Guitar. This is a great looking build for a rocker. Not only do the dual molded legs look great with the sort of high top sneakers, slashed pants, great print for the tank top on the front, but we also get probably the best mold in print for a guitar that we've seen so far in LEGO. The long hair piece used for the character is totally appropriate, especially with that uh, red headband that goes around and matches up with the tank top. This guy is awesome. The tattoos on the side of his arms, everything is just looking really cool for this guy. And I think it's about time we started a rock band out of minifigs, we're starting to get some really cool characters. 18 is a minifig called GPL Tech. This is a female scientist character with probably one of the coolest prints for any kind of lab coat that we've gotten from LEGO. There's so many LEGO lab coat scientist prints made, but this one has a Batman symbol underneath. She's got some big, massive uh, eyeglasses, about as big as we would have gotten from maybe a Robin figure from the LEGO Batman movie line, but these are just prints. She comes with a folding laptop piece, which is great. 
I love the Lego print that's uh, in the back of the laptop, kind of where you would see sort of a logo for another computer. And I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty sought after fig, but maybe not quite as sought after as the next guy. This is Sushi Chef. We've seen these sushi pieces relatively recently. They're not that new of a part. He comes with a nice big uh, cleaver and another little piece that actually shows an entire roll. The print on him is pretty great. There's uh, some shrimps that are uh, sort of embroidered onto his main torso, and he's got a matching headband slash bald headed mold that goes over the top of uh, his head. I already have an extra one of these guys, and he has been turned into the sushi chef that's on the rooftop of the Lego Ninjago City. Guess what? I was talking about sought after and more sought after minifigs, but I may have jumped the gun. The last one, number 20 in the collection, is N Pop Girl. That's sort of a play on words with K pop or maybe J pop girl. She basically is as colorful as you can get with a minifig. She comes with a tutu piece, and that is a recolored Harley Quinn hairpiece that we just uh, recently got from the Lego Batman movie. The teddy bear has also been recolored into pink. She's wearing a Unikitty shirt. There's just so much fun detailing for this character. And if you look very closely at her eyes, they have been printed ever so slightly wider than the average minifigure eye. And that subtle, subtle, subtle print does make it look like her eyes are much bigger compared to uh, the other characters that you see either printed in the collectible fig collection or just any sort of standard Lego prints. I can tell you when I was feeling through all the different bags, this was the one that all the girls were trying to find. Anyways, uh, this is the entire collection together. We got a great combination of some really cool, very, very unique figures and also a, a lot of guys that were just barely making the cut in terms of actually being exclusive. For me, a lot of the main characters that I got don't really draw me in. There isn't a whole lot of cool extra stuff that we get for, uh, you know, sort of the main ninjas. But once you get them in their sort of casual clothes, that becomes very interesting. And then there's a few just totally wacky and random characters that I absolutely love. All right, that's it for this episode, everyone. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, and uh, that's it. So we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.